once uh, once again welcome you to this lecture series on geotechnical investigation and just now or uh, in my uh, previous lecture i have mentioned about the boring and sampling that means in uh, all the steps and what are the initial information required while doing boring uh, we have mentioned and now we will try to uh, discuss about the boring equipments and many other aspects related to uh, geotechnical investigation and let me uh, go to the first slide of uh, this. Uh, you can see here that uh, boring equipment first thing is when you do the boring the most important thing is boring equipment and you can see here I have mentioned first is a hand auger and of course, I have written uh, 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 here all hand agar, agar and you can see this is a the handle and there is a, uh, a cutting uh, edge and with the handle at the surface if you holding like this you rotate and because of this blade sharp blade at the edge it will cut the soil and that cut soil will be entered into this zone and when it will filled up you have to uh, bring it outside of the hole and remove the soil and again further you have to uh, put it in the borehole and further again you rotate uh, like this and you have to do again and again this and by this hand agar and in fact uh, this is uh, not suitable for uh, most of the uh, uh, big job for a small job suppose you want to 5 to 6 meter uh, borehole is required sometime we can manage with this uh, uh, hand auger. So, this is one type of hand auger that means there will be blade at the end and there will be uh, some space to uh, well cutting soil to enter and when it will fill up it will be taken out of the hole and then removed and then further uh, subsequently again you have to uh, cut the soil and go downward like that. So, this is one uh, type of hand auger another type of hand auger is uh, this uh, this is helical. So, when you do is because of the helical if you rotate it will cut and uh, continuously and go downward and through this helix what soil will come out at the surface and that has to be taken out. And then uh, suppose this is having a, a definite length about 3 uh, 2 meter or something and if you want to go deeper then this handle can be removed and this extension rod can be added. And to enter into the uh, particular depth and then again further go deeper. So, this is uh, hand auger and most of the time it is uh, suitable for a small job not for any good job big job uh, one can manage a small job with this type of hand auger. Then it is a truck mounted auger actually and here actually you can see that the same thing the this one is a cutter head is there and then it is a continuous flight augers in section that means uh, you have to and cuttings will be coming in the in the, in the surface uh, it will come here and this can be attached to the uh, 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 truck and then uh, previously whatever we have shown that is actually basically by hand operated. Now, through this truck there may be some uh, 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 machine will be there. Uh, generator will be there through which this can be operated. So, you can go quite deep. So, it is much better than the standard hand auger and this is actually suitable for above water table in sand, silt and clays, make collapse in soft soil or below water table. So, these are the uh, uh, because when you are doing this the side soil may collapse actually. So, may not be suitable in that case. So, that is one thing. And next one is uh, wash drilling actually this is another type of thing you can see there will be a chipping bit here at the end and the water will be forced through this here and because of that the soil in this will be soil in this area will be cut and because of this pressure uh, of water the soil will cut and it will become mixed with water it become mud and those mud will be in the form of mud will come out and it will be put in a particular uh, basin or uh, tub and when you put this mud in the tub then what will happen some of the soil will settle there and clean water will overflow from here 
and that water can be reused. So, this is a wash boring and most of the time it is used in a soft soil and easy to do actually most conditions it can be used requires truck, drill rig and water for drilling mud. So, that water is required for drilling mud otherwise uh, uh, it, it cannot be done because this water only helping the cut the soil and finally, in the form of mud it is coming out here and this advantage of this type of uh, again wh what you have to do for uh, doing this type of uh, borehole uh, how to find out the stratification then the continuously this uh, fluid is coming out mud is coming out you have to observe the mud uh, color and you have to take the composition of the mud sometime you have to collect and see what it is carrying. Okay. And based on that uh, whenever there is a change then you immediately have to note that there is a change of layering. Similar to this uh, uh, sorry similar to this there is a, a rotary uh, wash drilling actually you can see it is little stronger and bigger equipment and almost similar it will be bit will be there a cutter bit or a core barrel with core bit attached to this and then again uh, same thing the water in the in the form of mud actually water will come out it will main pit and then from the settling settling pit and then it will go to the main pit and from there again it can be used. This is slightly complicated, but it is almost like uh, wash boring only, but it is cutting for the cutting the little stronger arrangement is required it actually the cutter bit or core barrel is required to cut this one. And also uh, it will be powered. Uh, uh, not by hand operation. Next one actually uh, uh, other type of uh, uh, drill actually percussion uh, drills are there that is actually suitable for gravels or soils with boulders and uh, casing used to support the hole and prevent caving. So, that means, uh, if it is a boulder type of things. So, if you make a borehole something like that. So, those uh, boulders etcetera they will come into the borehole and it will collapse. So, because of that generally you have to put some uh, casing. Uh, in fact, wash, bo uh, wash uh, boring I uh, missed the actually this point while making wash boring actually initially you have to buy auger actually you have to go little depth and then afterwards you have to put the uh, casing and then through that casing you have to do continuously wash boring otherwise it will not be otherwise surface collapse will be there possibility of collapse. And then wire line board drilling this deep holes and offshore drilling this is the method used. So, all details are there in most of the textbook if you are interested can read further about this. Next thing is sampling equipment. Uh, sorry, sampling equipment uh, we can have actually uh, or sampling equipment nothing but a sampler actually, and you can see the as I have mentioned before that disturb samples. How to get actually if the wall thickness is very suppose there is a sampler wall thickness is this much. And if you uh, this is a sampler suppose circular in section or whatever may be and if you push in the uh, soil because of this thickness actually the, the when soil enter into it there will be lot of disturbance. So, disturb some the thick wall sampler if you use generally we get disturb sample and used for routine job to identify soil and determine index property that means what actually if I get undisturbed sample or disturbed sample you cannot carry out uh, test for finding out strength or compressibility and all it is only to identification purpose that means, what is the grain size, what is the liquid limit, plastic limit etcetera to find out those only disturbed sample is required and you can collect. And disturbed sample collection generally that split barrel or SPT sampler uh, SPT I have not discussed. Well, SPT is, uh, while carry out SPT test there is a SPT sampler. Those sampler is a SPT mean actually split spoon sampler. Okay. So, that one uh, uh, 
that type of uh, 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 sampler actually that is that itself is a quite long and you have to drive and to penetrate inside the soil and while penetration it will collect some sample. So, that is the one so SPT and, and another auger you know that when you are doing uh, you are when you are rotating like this by uh, that uh, with a uh, blade at the end the soil get cut and that soil you are removing that soil also can be used as sample for identification purpose. So, auger sample and split barrel sample and split barrel actually one photograph is shown one uh, sketch is shown here you can see actually 32 inches long actually total length what is the diameter and different parts actually is shown and this is this can be actually after coming into bringing into the sample it can be divided and it, it will split and if it split and then you can one part if you remove then inside the uh, sampler how the soil is one can see visually and then afterwards you can collect that to do other further testing. So, this is one uh, SPT uh, sampler actually uh, while carry out SPT test uh, it will actually through this soil will enter actually and that soil can be used for uh, identification purpose also. And then undisturbed uh, sample you can see undisturbed sample actually uh, you have to collect undisturbed means soil almost in the field condition has to be collected and uh, this is essential for most important job where uh, like where clays are also exist clay also exist that means if the clay soil is there soft soil and it, it will be having some compressible uh, characteristics and because of that to find out that compressibility characteristics you need actually undisturbed sample if the disturbed sample it will not helpful with lot of error will be getting and sample used for labor uh, uh, sample used for laboratory testing for strength and consolidation that means undisturbed sample that means uh, we collect for doing this testing for uh, uh, strength and con consolidation characteristic these two important things you find out by undisturbed sample and how to get undisturbed sample a uh, disturbed sample very easy you collect uh, sample from the split pool or from auger it will be give you uh, the materials for uh, uh, lutein investigation work but if you want to find out the strength and compressibility you need undisturbed sample and part how to find out this undisturbed uh, how to uh, get uh, your undisturbed sample so it depends on the sampler actually you have to device uh, you have to make or fabricate a uh, uh, sampling device in such a way that while collecting the sample it will give you minimum disturbance so there are some guidelines actually you can see here it is given that sample requirements of sampler for undisturbed sample so that one actually is given or two things are given area ratio and inside clearance ratio. So, how it is defined actually it is suppose I very enlarge one I will draw this is the one so it, it, it is not correct actually I will re remove this one. So, suppose the sampler is like this. So, uh, how it is defined area ratio? So, D naught actually it is from outer to outer is the D naught. is the D naught and E naught to E naught this is D i D i. So, here actually area ratio is D naught square minus D i square by D i square multiplied by 100 and to satisfy the sampler as a uh, undisturbed as an undisturbed sampler that the value area ratio should be less than 10 percent. So, that means you have to De, uh, fabricate the sampler in such a way 
the inside diameter and outside diameter you measure and then based on that you calculate this one if it is less than 10 percent then that satisfy as a uh, undisturbed sampler. And now next one is the inside clearance ratio you can see d i and this one is the d i already I have shown and d edge. So, that means at the end little bend will be there to cut the soil. So, that edge what is the diameter? So, that is suppose d. So, then 100 times d i multiplied at d e by d e if you compute com this one and if the value comes less than 1 percent then only it will satisfy as a as an undisturbed uh, sampler, uh, sampler. So, that means, so to collect undis undisturbed sample you have to first of all fabricate the sampler in such a way that area ratio become less than 10 percent and inside clearance ratio become less than 1 percent. How what is the area ratio what is the inside clearance ratio from this sketch actually uh, I could have got some better sketch, but anyway the it will have some wall thickness because of that uh, inside diameter and outside diameter will be different. So, that actually based on that it is area ratio and uh, uh, though the sampler is uh, almost vertical, but at the edge little sharpening will be the little bend and sharpening because of that at the edge diameter will be little less. So, that is the one shown here d e. So, d i minus d e by d e multiplied by 100 if comes less by 1 per less than 1 percent that is also called uh, that is also satisfactory for uh, undisturbed sampling. Now, uh, there are a few names are mentioned here the sample sampler type the hydraulic piston pitcher and, and Denison barrel and uh, these are actually uh, uh, sampler by which we can get the undisturbed sample. Another actually very good way of collecting undisturbed sample hand cut block sample. Okay. Suppose, there is a area uh, uh, suppose this is the area uh, uh, okay. so if first of all you excavate uh, deep and suppose uh, this is the excavation level, but what I do I will keep the excavate all around I will keep this this soil. Okay. So, then it remove some portion from the top and then from here to here I can collect one block that big block as it is I will take I take it to the laboratory and from there I can prepare the sample to testing. So, that is also undisturbed sample and undisturbed sample means what actually when you do this uh, take this block again if you keep it exposed then moisture loss and many things will happen. So, because of that there will be some mechanism to collect the sample you have to put it in the polythene bag and when you are taking in the sample tube there actually you have to put wax both sides so that it will be sealed no moisture will be lost. So, that is the another way of uh, make the uh, uh, prevent from uh, change because of the uh, change of weather because from the field you have to bring it to the laboratory maybe sometime it may take 2 3 days time sometime it will be uh, because of distance or sometime you collect together and bring it. So, because of that time you may it may loss uh, it may lose some amount of moisture and all. So, that has to be also prevented by uh, proper care like you have to put it in the polythene or you have to wax it like that. So, this is the difficult ways of collecting undisturbed sample. Next is in situ testing and you can see uh, uh, while uh, doing uh, this uh, uh, geo geophysical investigation or uh, 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 soil exploration if there is any scope you have to additionally can carry out the uh, field test and that will be helpful and there are uh, certain areas where they are very useful particularly you can see uh, that extensive use that in situ testing uh, during uh, boring is a very very uh, commonly used and particularly when ground improvement work is carried when a uh, ground improvement is scheme is taken for a particular area suppose 
a particular site is weak, then we have I recommended some ground improvement technique. And when you ground improvement technique is recommended, so after improvement, uh, how is the uh, how is the condition that has to be test in situ itself. So, that actually you do different types of in situ test. So, that is also is in ground improvement evaluation that is you use different types of uh, uh, in situ test they are in CPT, SPT and geophysical testing, vent shear test, then resistivity test there is one name resistivity test, resistivity resistivity test also. So, there are these are the different types of field test we carry out uh, very commonly uh, during uh, boring and uh, 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 process and uh, it is more suitable particularly suitable for evaluating ground improvement uh, site. And of course, for doing this there must be some advantage there must be some disadvantage and they are listed here you can see that uh, uh, advantage is first use in soil that cannot be sampled easily which is actually very uh, interesting because particularly when sand and all uh, collecting undisturbed sample very very difficult it is almost impossible. So, in that case uh, it is better to get the field test to get the, the to evaluate the soil properties. So, that means first thing is advantage as use in soil that cannot be sampled easily. So, particularly sand is one then your gravel is another one if it is a very soft sensitive soil also it is another point soft sensitive soil what will happen during uh, because of the sensitivity uh, while sampling it will be disturbed so much that when you carry out test in the laboratory it will not be of representative to the site. So, those condition that means, uh, your uh, sand or gravel sand gravel then your uh, soft soil where your undisturbed sample is difficult it is useful and test in correct environment that means, you can see that is another important thing test in if you add advantage of uh, field test is we are testing the correct environment that means, when you take into the laboratory environment will change environment means site environment and the site environment means uh, because of this depth uh, at different depth actually because of the confinement and all will change water table many other things are there which laboratory you are doing control condition, but here actually there are so many uncontrolled uh, environmental effects are there under which we are testing. So, that way it is beneficial and continuous profile that means, CPT sometime we get profile something like this. Okay. So, uh, zigzag uh, profile uh, continue when you advance to the depth you will continuously get the profile and uh, whereas, uh, uh, in a, a, uh, this is advantage of CPT and whereas, is if you do SPT, SPT also you do carry out some interval sub 1.5 meter interval that means, SPT number of suppose this is the depth and SPT number at different depth you, you are carrying out different depth some numbers if you plot also you will get by and large a, a continuous profile like. So, how the SPT number is varying uh, we can get and that variation of SPT number itself will be giving indication of the variation of the soil profile. So, that means, continuous profile we are getting from field test. Similarly, uh, to carry out uh, field test sometimes cost effective you have to go to the site and in uh, very minimum time you can carry out a large number of test which will be correlated to different soil properties most of the time it will be very very economic. Next part is uh, there must there are advantage there must be some disadvantage also you can see first thing is mentioned here uh, no samples for identification. If you carry out some test like CPT type of test and then or if you venture test if you carry out in the site or plate load test in the site you do not have any soil or a sample for identification of course, you have to do differently. So, that is the advantage uh, disadvantage that means, if you carry out field test 
uh, uh, you do not have sample to uh, uh, for identification purpose and some unknown test condition like uh, in soil mechanics you have done that uh, suppose triaxial test you carry out triaxial test and in the triaxial test you can simulate different condition very easily and uh, suppose I have collected a sample at uh, 5 meter depth and 5 meter depth what are the confining pressure accordingly I can put the shell pressure and all I can simulate the field condition. But here uh, uh, particularly in situ test we do not have that control there are many unknown condition will be there under which you have to carry out the test and you have to get the results. So, that is the second disadvantage and need empirical correlation actually need empirical that means, I get SPT number only from that side of course, uh, uh, initially uh, many people investigated that uh, suppose SPT uh, uh, test is carried out and then sample also collected from the same depth and then that soil might have uh, tested in the laboratory and got the strength property or compressibility properties. And then from the SPT number and the strength and compressibility properties finally, they have correlated and there are number of correlations available and so, you have to rely on that that is one thing. So, need empirical correlation that means, if you carry out test, but now that this type of some of the tests are used so long so many years people are experienced they know uh, what type of correlation will be useful and that is available, but still this is the drawback that so only by carrying out the test you will not get the soil property you have to use the help of correlation then to find out the soil properties. So, that is another disadvantage and if the correlation is not fitting most of the time correlations are developed for a particular site or soil condition and may not be suitable for other condition. But uh, so, those type of things of areas sometimes it will give you some problem and uh, test only current condition that means, uh, in the in the in the in the uh, 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 in the field test what are we are doing uh, when you are carrying out the test that is currently what is the uh, condition the under that condition only you are testing, but this condition may be after 6 months may change after 3 months may change after one year may change like that. So, that means, because of this variation what should be the change that we do not know. So, that has to be again incorporated by some other means. So, this is also another disadvantage that we are testing only on the correct condition. Okay. So, suppose if the water table like variation and all those things uh, because of that some changes will be there which will not be able to uh, get from this type of in situ testing. So, these are the different uh, advantage and disadvantages of field testing. Now, uh, next thing I will discuss about the different type of field testing about CPT, SPT in detail and then what are the different correlation available to find out the soil properties and design of foundation and that part perhaps I will take in the in the subsequent uh, lecture. Thank you.